So this is data structures review for programmers. The reason I'm doing this series of data structures review for programmers is because many programmers or software engineers or application developers has actually have actually forgotten some of the theories of uh, uh, data structures. And in programming, data structures is very, very important because it's, it's implemented by different programming languages. For instance, the hash map, the arrays, the array list, collections, and so on in, in different programming languages. So we actually, as programmers, should have an idea of the theories of how they work. So that is why I decided to make this series. So for about five minutes, we are going to be talking about particular data structures. So don't think uh, since you're a programmer now, you, you have to forget the theories behind it. So it's, it's necessary. I'm going to make it easy, simple, and clear. So basically, today we are going to be looking at Koku Hashin. So Koku Hashin actually derives its name from this bed called Koku. So this bed has a peculiar way uh, behavior. So this bed, what happens is when it goes to a nest, it actually doesn't build its own nest. So what it does is that if it goes to a nest, let's say we have this bed, okay? So, no, if I can draw, okay. So when it goes to a particular nest, it will actually eject whatever is in that nest and actually stay in that nest. So that is how a cuckoo as a bird behaves. So let's now see how it works. So let me give a little note on how it works. The cuckoo hashing actually maintains, maintains two hash tables, two hash tables, T1 and T2, and two hash functions h1 and h2 so what happens is that each item has one of two uh, locations to hash in so for instance if we want to hash an item x it means that x has two locations that it could hash in it could hash into h1 a uh, h1 of x and it could hash into h2 of x Okay, let's talk about the search time. The search time is actually constant time, order of one. The reason is because when we want to search an element, we are actually looking only in two locations in this hash table. So we calculate the h1 of x. We look for it in the table one. So let's say this is table one. And this table one works with h1. And this is table two. It works with h2. So once we want to uh, uh, search for an item, we search for it in H1. If we find it there, we retrieve it. If we don't find it there, we go to H2 and search for it. So in that way, we only have two locations to search for it. When we come to delete, we also repeat the same cycle. If we want to delete an item, we only check two locations to, for this item. And same goes for insert, but insert is actually a bit more interesting. While it takes constant time, it's a bit more interesting to, to see how it works. So let me tell you a little about the insert. So let's say we want to insert an item and we calculate the H, our H1, let's say it hashes into this place, let's say 35. And then we try to hash another item, let's say, uh, let's say H1, we, it, it gets us into this place, we have 35, let's say 35, and we check 35, uh, this, this location we see is free, we place it there, then we want to now hash another item, and let's say it hashes into this place, just for example, and that, let's say that item is 24, so now let's simulate a situation whereby collision occurs, and that is what makes it interesting. So we want to hash, let's say, another item, and that item is x1. So we calculate h1 of x1, and let's say it hashes into this location as well. So what is going to happen is that whatever is in here is going to be ejected. So the item we want to insert into that place, let's assume is 15, or let's, let's say um, 26. So this 24 is actually going to be ejected and 26 is going to be put in. So 24 is going to be ejected. And remember I mentioned this bait here. 
So what will then happen is 24 is going to now be inserted into the location of H2 uh, of X. So the, the second hash position for X for this item will now occupy be occupied by the item that is ejected from its home. So let's say if it's here, we put it in this position. Now, is it possible that when we try to insert an item in the first position and we eject an item from there and we try to insert into a second position, we also have an item there. So what we are going to do is we also eject that item onto the another position in the first hash table. And the same thing repeats itself. Uh, if there is something there, we also eject it. We we'll eject whatever is there. So let's say in the first place we ejected an item from, from let's say slot one S one, and that item was in, uh, inserted into S two. But when we check that S two, we see that slot S two also has an item. So we have to uh, remove what is in there and put it in slot s11 one, one, okay so in that way we can actually draw a graph like this s1 to s2 to s11 one, one. so something like this is called a koku graph something like this is called a koku graph i'm going to write it here Alright, so now when we have a cuckoo graph, we can actually monitor it and if it repeats and there is a cycle in the cuckoo graph, then we actually rehash. What it means is that we choose another H1 and H2. Remember that H1 and H2, H1 and H2 comes from a universal hash family uh, of hash functions. So I'm going to actually stop here. This is how Cuckoo Hashing works. Um, it's very efficient because everything such delete and insert is constant time and also it's peculiar because it maintains two hash tables. This has been informative for you. Please click on subscribe button below and also leave me a comment and uh, if there's particular data structure you want me to treat, then leave it in the comment box below so that I can actually uh, treat it. So we see in the next uh, uh, data structure review for programmers.